Hello, and welcome to the Thai Center video series on including students with significant cognitive disabilities in school-wide positive behavioral interventions and supports, called PBIS for short. This video is focused on PBIS leadership teams and data. I'm Dr. Patricia McDade from the Thai Center. The image on the screen depicts a group of students with and without disabilities together in a school hallway smiling at the camera. In this video, I will provide you with some strategies to create inclusive PBIS leadership teams and data systems. The image on the screen depicts a group of school-aged children with and without disabilities at a playground. When we design interventions for students with significant cognitive disabilities who have challenging behaviors, we traditionally start with PBIS Tier 3 intensive support in the form of a behavioral intervention plan, or BIP. However, students can often have better behavioral outcomes if they have access to all three tiers of PBIS. The five components of Tier 1 PBIS are, one, establish a leadership team, two, collect and review data, three, create clear behavioral expectations, four, teach behavioral expectations, and five, establish an acknowledgement system. In this video, I will focus on how components one and two of tier one PBIS can be made more fully inclusive of all students. Component one of PBIS tier one is the PBIS leadership team. The team drives the creation and monitoring of a school-wide PBIS system. Some of the primary responsibilities of the team include ensuring representation of all stakeholder groups on the PBIS team, reviewing and disseminating data on the fidelity of implementation of PBIS and on student outcomes, and engaging in group problem solving. Research has identified a common problem of practice in this area. Special education teachers who specialize in teaching students with significant cognitive disabilities, whether in inclusive schools or self-contained settings, are rarely included on PBIS teams. Having voices that represent the entire school community at the table is essential so that the needs of this student group are considered in the creation of school-wide PBIS systems. Our recommendation is to ensure that PBIS teams include personnel that represent all students who attend the school. If special education teachers with expertise in students with significant cognitive disabilities, paraprofessionals, and related service providers are invited to participate in the PBIS team, it is much easier to create a fully inclusive school-wide PBIS system. An inclusive leadership team promotes increased collegiality and promotes membership of all students in the school community. The quotation from Vander and Barr on the screen quote, if the adults are separate, the kids are separate, unquote, reminds us of the value of collaboration. An inclusive PBIS leadership team also benefits students, teachers, and the school as a whole by allowing all of the expertise in the building to be available to support all of the students in the building, regardless of disability level. Now let's talk about component two of tier one PBIS, data collection. There are two types of data collected in tier one PBIS, implementation fidelity data, and student outcomes data. A common problem of practice is that PBIS fidelity tools do not specifically measure the use of adaptations to ensure participation of all students. Our recommendation is to adapt scoring criteria to include the use of adaptations in order to receive a top score. The tiered fidelity inventory, also known as the TFI, is a checklist of items related to full implementation of school-wide PBIS. The image on the screen shows item 1.3 of the TFI. 1.3, behavioral expectations. School has five or fewer positively stated behavioral expectations and examples by setting location for student and staff behaviors, i.e. school teaching matrix, defined and in place. Under possible data sources, TFI walkthrough tool, staff handbook, and student handbook. And under the scoring criteria, zero, behavioral expectations have not been identified. One, behavioral expectations are identified but may not include a matrix or be posted. And two, five or fewer behavioral expectations exist that are positive, 
posted and identified for specific settings. And at least 90% of staff can list at least 67% of the expectations. Here's an example of simple additions you could make to the scoring criteria for item 1.3 of the TFI. Underneath the list of scoring criteria previously described, there are now two additional items. One, each behavioral expectation and matrix item has an accompanying photo or line drawing. And two, some posters are placed at waist level to accommodate users of wheelchairs. When measuring changes in student behavior for tier one, schools generally look at office discipline referrals, ODRs, and suspension data. Improvements in positive social behavior are tracked using a token-based school-wide acknowledgement system. PBIS encourages schools to clearly differentiate behaviors that are, quote, office managed from those that should be classroom managed, and then track the office managed behaviors using the ODR. The ODR provides information on the time, place, and nature of challenging behavior that occurs. A common problem of practice around student outcome data is that students with significant cognitive disabilities who receive intensive behavioral supports, especially those who are placed in self-contained classrooms, are usually not sent to the office following a behavioral episode. Their data is then not included in the school-wide behavior tracking system. Our recommendations include using ODRs to track behavioral episodes, including student incident reports in school-wide tracking, and including ABC antecedent behavior consequence data collection forms in school-wide tracking. A more inclusive PBIS team has the expertise needed to include students with significant cognitive disabilities in all components of the PBIS system, including data on fidelity of implementation and student outcome data. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out the other videos in this series. If you want to learn more, there is a link to the references cited in this presentation and information about the TIE Center in the video description.